double the witness average. The stand was sold out six days ago. It's witness the champions against Salford, who are quite capable of spoiling the party. Well, this was Jonathan Davis arriving here at North Park for one of the biggest days of his life. Any nerves, Jonathan? Any nerves at all? Yeah, slightly. Natural. He follows in a distinguished line of Welsh rugby union stars who've chosen the road north. A pioneer along the way was Lewis Jones. It's 37 years since the great man came from Penethley to Leeds for the princely sum of £6,000. And he set a high standard for others to follow. But in David Watkins, Salford unearthed another genius. It took him, though, a year or two to adapt. He's now in our team, of course, and we've cut his hair a little. Another Clenethly man who came north, Gary Pierce, also found the early going tough in Rugby League, but as any Hull fan will tell you, he's found the secret now. And opposing Jonathan Davis today, Adrian Hadley, a flying winger who carried all before him at Cardiff, but at Salford, he's still learning. So if these big names found it hard to adjust, what price Jonathan Davis, a slight, shy man in a strange new world? One man perfectly placed to judge is David Watkins. David, has he got what it takes? He's got speed, class, arrogance, and he can tackle despite what people might think. It's a good team he's joined, a communicative coach. I feel he's got all the ingredients for a successful transition. The game should reveal it all. The Witness fans will be hoping so, and I'm sure everybody else will as well. Kevin Hillary seems to have forgotten that Salford have played in this match. Yeah, it suits us. Uh, he's had phone calls from Wales, uh, New Zealand, Australia, Scotland. Uh, what we're going to do about Jonathan Davis. And as far as I'm concerned, never even thought about the guy. You know, he's under enough pressure. And uh, he's signed on now as a professional rugby league player. And it's all soon to get out there and prove he's, he's worth his money. And we'll just be playing a normal game. And whatever Jonathan Davis or Hercules will still be doing their own thing. Well, the championship table underlines how much both teams need to win today. The champions witness just three points off the lead and Salford with a chance to go fourth. But for the fans, Jonathan Davis is the attraction. I think um, it'll be very hard to catch him. The first one might miss him, but the others might uh, clob him a bit. But we'll, we'll have to see. Oh, I think they better not watch him too much, because if they do, they might give Martin and Fire too much room on that wing. So they've got to treat him just like anybody else. It's the occasion. Could it get to him, though? I mean, all the pressure that's been on him. And the I don't think Dougie Lawton's a good enough coach to make sure he'll put him on at the right time. I don't think pressure will get to him. I think the only... The best thing to do is for winners to get in front with 30 and then give him a, an easy ride. Dougie, I would think you'd be glad when today's over in some ways. Yeah, it'd be nice to get out of the way. It has been a busy uh, couple of weeks. And I just hope we get the right results and that things go well for the lad. Have there has been a stage in these 10 days where you wish you hadn't brought him here? There's been many stages like that. I thought, I think if we had to go on that road again, I probably wouldn't do it. Um, that being said, it'll all die down a bit. And it's just, my main concern now is like uh, for the player. The sooner getting to be a normal witness player, the happier it'll be. So it's the number 14 jersey for Davis today in a witness team missing Sorensen, who has an arm injury, and Mackenzie, who's hurt a shoulder. So Tony Myler switches to loose forward instead of Richie Ayres, who moves to hooker, and Barry Dowd takes Myler's place to stand off. And here they are, a tremendous welcome for them. The whole team of stars, of course, last season's champions witness, but everybody's eyes straining to see the man wearing the number 14 jersey this afternoon making his debut in rugby league after such a successful time in rugby union jonathan davis there he is in the tracksuit and we shall have to wait and see how long it is before he makes his debut in rugby league we all wish you i'm sure the very best here's the opposition they welcome back peter williams after injury ian gormley is preferred to mark moran at hooker and tony and mick worrell play on the same side for the first time this season for Salford to shine on this very public stage at Norton Park. Just a quick word about a competition later in the programme. Your chance to win two seats for next week's international and you'll be taken there in style. And tremendous attention still from photographers who've come from all around the world to see Jonathan Davis this afternoon. We're all set. He'll make his debut later. Here's our match commentator, John Hell. Thanks, Nick. Well, the match will seem almost an anti-climax after a build-up uh, like that. Well, David, Jonathan Davies' debut, a little different from your own. Very much so. I signed on on the Thursday, played on Friday night, and uh, was introduced by teammates in the changing room. He's had a week to settle down, but what a week it's been. I must say, he looked a little nervous as he came out. Not surprisingly. So the action's underway, and everybody can concentrate on that, and the ball immediately lost by Coloto. So the Red Devils, Salford... 
Kent have a chance here just outside the witness 25. This is Steve Herbert back for little David Kent. A will and a whisk from Hart. <laughs> and he's been dragged along by the collar by Joe Grimmer. Or sure. So many good players on the field here today. Well, there is. You know, the eyes and attention of the whole world is in sport, uh, the media, and uh, it's as much uh, for Salford to knock witness off their perch as it is for witness really to establish a good game for Jonathan. Herbert knocked the first man away. Good to see Norton Park absolutely filled. And a uh, useful kick over as well. Just going to go dead. And a lot of players out there today, David, knowing that the eyes of the world are on them, are going to want to produce their best performance. That's right, and uh, it'll be interesting to see Tony Myler switching from stand-up half to loose forward. But he says much for the man that he can play in both positions. And this is what this great game of ours has now done for players, is make them interchangeable. Hugh to Grimmer. And the fire still hasn't had the feel of the ball. Good ball though, snappled by uh, Bragger. Cairns cut inside of fire, right had to go with him. You already get the feeling Salford want to play their part in this occasion. Well, I think they've got to play football. Uh, points are important to them in the first division, and uh, today is no exception. And they'll want to spoil everything that Jonathan Davis thinks is going to come good for him. Sure, lovely skipping run from the Australian, and back inside here to Adrian Hadley. Hadley's ten yards out. Enterprising football here from Salford. A lot of it centred around their halfbacks, Sean Cairns, and that is sure. Misses out Cairns this time, and that was all right because it came off the boot of Horro. But it was on the sixth tackle. Witness survive that one. Tony Myra, I felt Tony perhaps should have taken the full back on. He was looking to kick it over the top for the fire. But witness have the possession again with Tate storming into the attack. David Hugh, reverse ball here for Dowd. He thought he saw a gap and it wasn't there. Hume inside is Myler. Go on, well got out of the tackle by Myler as well to Ayres. And then really trying to whip that ball around but in the end it's gone into the hands of little Paul Shaw again a little bit of over keenness maybe there <laughs> Herbert for Salford shows a good clean pair of heels and gets Bentley streaking away now Andy Currier goes across. Well, Keith Bentley is enjoying a superb season. He's got 15 tries already. And he was going like a train that time. Gibson goes back, oh, makes a slip, the fire's got a chance here as he hacks ahead, and the fire surely is in for a try. A disastrous mistake by Steve Gibson. Salford can't believe it, but uh, the fire is always there, ready to pounce. He's knocked himself out, I believe, on the upright as well. But a dreadful mistake well, by Gibson. Well, this is a kick ahead, which is a speculative full-backs uh, dilemma now, not knowing whether to fall or not. A fire snatching onto the loose ball quickly. The defence is broken. A fire chips onto the post, and that's a great start for Witness. And, uh, the crowd will obviously want him to continue. Jonathan Davis looks uh, in some consternation. And 
and nice to see him leading the applause. <laughs> I think he's probably very happy for Martin if I had to carry on for the moment. I think he is as well. He did he, starting to build a platform uh, rather fortuitously, really, to, to make that try. But nonetheless, it's a good start for witness. He told everything to a fire speed, and it must be so difficult for a fullback knowing that a fire is coming up like that. So Andy Currier, the top point scorer in rugby league this season, adds on another two. And Witness go into a six-point lead. Cairns for Salford, oh, and that was a well-timed run as well on the burst from, uh, from Worrell. And still coming is Shaw. Shaw and Cairns have made a really impressive start to this game at half-back for Salford. A lively little couple. Chance for Braggart. Salford is certainly making their contribution to this game as Mick Warren comes on the barge. Only five yards out as well. Braggart, Williams. David Cairns flings out the long ball. They're trying to work it over to Keith Bentley. He's come inside nicely. Finds Shaw in support and this is good from Salford. Still going through the hands as Steve Herbert takes up the attack. He's bundled over by Rick Thackeray. But uh, that's the handover. But that was good play from Salford. Yes, there's no quiet question in their commitment and uh, doing well. They are creative with halfbacks, and it is important. If both half guards are playing really well, they can set up so much play as they are the links between backs and forwards. One down, saw the gap again, he's got support on his right from Hume and decided to go it alone. Well, he might have been better giving that ball to David Hume. However, Coloto's here for witness. And they have so much speed when they get cut through the middle like that. David Hume again, wriggling free, giving it to Dowd, who again goes for the gap and again gets through the gap. Now that he's got support from Paul Hume this time. Eight, maybe ten yards out, and Salford are going to have to defend manfully here because Tate and they're all here. Miles back inside. It's a try, all right, for Grimmer. Excellent play from Witness. They really prized Salford open that time, and it was a doggle in the end. Well, perhaps it's their directness, and they've just missed one opportunity, but when Witness move forward, they go straight, and that's important. Look. How the prop comes on to it, Grimmer, a fine-tuned pass from Tony Myler, an easy try, and that's put them on top. Ten points up, and Joe Grimmer's second try of the season. And Andy Currier will be thanking these fellas for putting the ball down between the sticks, because they're leaving him easy tasks here. Goal number 73 of the season for Currier. Takes Witness into a 12-point lead. Witness have made the more errors so far. Twice as many as Salford, but that's probably because they are throwing the ball around. Well, that was odd. <laughs> do that there here, says the referee. Ian Blees was slightly bemused by all that. <laughs> Ten minutes from half-time. Tate puts boot to ball. And a chance now for Witness. So they have the possession. And a little tap here, just outside the 25. O'Neill and Grimmer. Grimmer it was who came onto it. Grimmer's run very well today. Ayres. Myler. O'Neill. Oh, and O'Neill. O'Neill sprinting for the line. And that's a super try from the prop forward. Well, it's not often you see a prop forward going in at speed like that. But Mike O'Neill there. Well, he was swiftness itself. 
Well, we must have made some mistakes, but uh, Richie Asia throws the ball inside. An intricate move with players going all over the place. But when McAneel catches this ball, he breaks the defence by running straight. And nobody can hold him because of that reason. What a good try. Try number four for him this season. He seems to be rejuvenated at the moment. Witness uh, trying to take this game beyond Salford's reach in the first half. Carrier's kick is successful again. And Witness go 18 points in front. Five minutes from half time. Very strong tackle there by Dowd. Big can stretch, but Shaw's there, and so is Braggett, and now Hadley runs straight into a fire, but uh, his strength carries him a few extra yards, Adrian Hadley. Well, Salford have shown some enterprising work in attack, it's just been their defence which has let them down, and Shaw shows more enterprise here, Peter Williams makes a dash for the line, Oro joins in. And that was uh, much better because of the long ball thrown out by Shaw. Keith Bentley's coming field, and again it's a long one. Herbert, the little chip through, and I think Herbert might just score. Oh, I thought he was going to get there. Right run him out of it. But they do look capable of scoring tries. Well, that was much better. The long ball then, and Peter Williams running onto it on the burst, took him through the initial uh, stages of the defence, and uh, they were unfortunate not to score then in the corner. that wasn't a good kick out at all but Ian Gormley knocking on well Salford last season met witness twice and scored only two points and well, haven't got one today yet there'll be a penalty here because that was fielded by David Hume so Salford do have a chance to get themselves two points they opt for the kick. Peter Williams. Kicking for touch. Cairns for Worrell. This is Tony Worrell. Well, Salford probably deserve a try for all their efforts in this first half. Shaw couldn't quite cut you on there. Cairns, again he's involved with a huge ball out, and surely has to be a try here, and there is indeed, and it's Peter Williams who's over, Bragger putting him in, and Salford have merited that try. Could have been a dangerous one, Thackeray almost intercepted it. Salford are on the scoreboard. Well, they knew they had to score. They put in pressure now on the witness defence. They're 18 points behind. They move it about. Kearns does the loop around. A long ball over the top. And this is where it's different. Takes it on the burst. Pushes off the tackle who's come up too quickly. Thackeray. And draws his man perfectly hurt. Tate can do nothing about it. And Peter Williams goes over. So, one former rugby union international has got his name... On the score sheet, Peter Williams. Can he convert his own try? Of course, Salford without their most regular goal kicker this season, Peter Brown, who's suspended. So the captain has the job today. Left-footed. Uh, it's a bit of a flapper, really. So he's got a try. He hasn't converted it, and it's witness 18, Salford 4. only a minute to go to half time and then you can be sure that all the crowd during the interval will be talking and saying now is this the time we're going to see Jonathan Davis one fan actually said it'd be rather nice 
from Goodness's point of view, if they could be 30 points up and then bring him on. Right? Well, it would be nice. He's got everything in his favour. He's got a witness side that's playing quite well. He's, as I've already said, the coach is good. He'll be well looked after, and I'm sure all the fans are now waiting for him to emerge from that bench. Williams, a chip, but he's gone straight to Carrier. Nez, who's in the Great Britain squad for next week's test match against France. I think you can see exclusively on the scrub there. Down, Myler, and they're coming up at speed here with Tate, and he's got good speed as well. Tony Myler, and this is thrilling, and Tony Myler streaks in for a really popular try. He is an excellent player, and he certainly enjoyed that one. Tony Myler switched to loose forward today for his customary stand-up half roll. Gets his ninth of the season. What more can you say about this witness scoring machine? They move the ball out wide here. Now just watch how they take it now and take it on the burst. Myler, perfectly timed pass. Tate steadies himself, draws back. Myler comes in. You look how he uses the foil. Goes to pass to him. They know. Hadley holds off. A fire knows where he's going. So does Tony Myler. What a great try. Well, witness his quality streak today with people like Myler running in tries like that one. And uh, Carrier pops it over again. A really satisfactory first half then for Witness, and that is really going to ease Dougie Lawton's problem about when to bring Davis on. As the hooter goes, 24-4, and a thoroughly satisfactory first half. What a first class first half. Salford played a lot of fancy football, didn't quite make the gaps and, and make the breaks that really counted. Whereas Witness turned round, they made those crucial breaks, and they had backing up, they ran straight, and they are well justified their half-time lead. He's signing his name now, but uh, one wonders if he'll be writing his name onto the score sheet in the second half. We wait to see in a few moments. Half-time is Witness 24, Salford 4, tries from Fire, Grimmer, O'Neill and Myler against one from Peter Williams. Join us again for what promises to be a terrific second half after the break. Welcome back to Norton Park. All eyes on the tunnel to see if a certain gentleman wearing a number 14 shirt emerges haven't seen him yet but everybody looking for Jonathan Davis and uh, Dougie Lawton said before the game it was entirely his decision as to the right time to bring his man on and it doesn't look as though Davis is going to be playing at the start of the second half in fact he's not there he is again wearing a huge grin but I'm sure he knows he's going to get a taste of the action at some stage Jack was very pleased with how it's gone so far I think yes sir, it's going well I Sticking him on in a bit, and then that'll be shall we go? What are you and how long are you going to give him before he comes on? About five, ten minutes. Well, at least we know how long we've got to wait now. Very kind of Doug Lawton to let us into the secret. So the second half is underway. And witness hoping to build on that four try half. Salford rather desperate to get back into this one. They don't want to be humiliated in front of all these people. French television and goodness knows who else. In fact, there were 130 press applications for this game. What a splendid kick again that one is. That's a quite superb kick. And again, it's Peter Williams. Well, that's right. I mean, some of their approach work has been exceptionally good. They just haven't finished anything off. And it is important for them now, as Dougie Lawton was saying, for Salford as well, the next 10 minutes of this half is going to be crucial to their part in this game. <laughs> Well, teams do struggle here at Witness, and this season, so many have scored only a single figure number of points. Witness's ball, Salford have made one change, by the way, for the second half, and that was clever. Carrier, he's a good player, Carrier, and he's got the speed as well, lobs it back to Barry Dowd, and fire has the ball. Well, he took a lot longer to get it in the first half. I was saying Salford have made a change. Mark Moran is on in place of Mark Oro in the second half. Coloto again coming up on the burst and Myler shows it, gives it back inside for Thackeray. Hugh running 
Grimmer, one of the try scorers in the first half. Much improved forward. Oh, and a nice ball back inside as well. He's got Tony Myler streaming towards that line. And there's an injury here. And we could be seeing Jonathan Davis rather earlier than we, or even Doug Lawton, anticipated because that was a very quick signal indeed from the referee and from uh, David Hume to signal the injury. Yes, uh, the ball coming quickly here, and uh, Richard Ayres takes the man out, half tackled and held, throws it inside. Tony Myler now looking for the gap, streaks in between it, eludes one tackle and is pulled to the ground rather quickly, ground on his ankle, it looks as if it's come over on his ankle and it looks pretty serious. Well, this is a blow, but they're going to bring on David Marsh, and you can sense that the crowd are really stunned by this. He's such a popular player, Tony Myler. So he ends the game on a stretcher. Witness edging the scrums, but still neither hooker has won one against the head. And only four penalties in the entire match. Two each. And errors are equal as well at six apiece. And the penalty has been given. And it's been given to Salford. Herbert's the first man up. And did well. Mick Worrell was in support. As always, the three-man tackle. Shaw, now what can he do? Decides to give it back here for the uh, hooker. And Bragger, we've seen him run well on scrum down. And Shaw will jig towards the line and chip through, obstructed by Tate. And that will be a penalty against Witness and against Alan Tate, who will say he had no option. Shaw would have been a scorer. Well, it was uh, possibly the professional foul that they all talk about, but uh, he, he, he didn't get out of the way, and rightly so, he was penalised. And that was enterprising play by Salford. Uh, this man Bragger's quick, as his recent record shows. And again, it's going right this time with Shaw back inside to Cairns. Cairns like, tries to find a way through. And the fire is a little bit suspect out on that side. Well, he's not suspect, but he's going to have to use all his uh, experience in rugby league to stop his man, Hadley, there. The word I was looking for was exposed down there because he had two men coming up on him. Fire got it right. His scrum wheels round. The ball is out on the witness side. He's a big lad, is this David Marsh? O'Neill skips aside one challenge. This is good, and Dow gives it back inside, and Carrier has to fought with Thackeray. Now Rick Thackeray's got a real running chance, tries to go outside Bentley, goes outside both Homer and the hooker. Rick Thackeray scores a super wingers try. That was really excellent. The fire claims close to the headlines here, but Thackeray is a very good rugby league winger too. Well, Salford have uh, been, uh, witness rather, been mopping up the pressure, but now they move out their own 25, and this is good inventive rugby. Good backing up as well. Thackeray takes it, sidesteps Bentley, comes back outside. Hadley and the loose forward now chasing him, but they can't do anything on him. And what a marvellous try in the corner. Well, Rick Thackeray is going off. There is applause ringing out for him. And here comes the man about whom all the fuss has been. Swirls wide, but the crowd almost didn't care. Witness lead by 28 points to four. And now the moment the crowd have come for. 
as Jonathan Davies gets his first taste of rugby league action in a Whitney shirt. And I don't think he'd have got a better reception at the arms park. Well, I think it says much for the way he has already been taken by this witness public, and there'll be everybody here this afternoon willing him on, I'm sure. In goes the gum shield. Out comes the ball on the Salford side. first tackle there so distracting almost to uh, everybody else everybody's looking at Davis while the play is going on elsewhere well it's so difficult you're like a chicken without your head uh, for some time you're just looking where to go you don't know what to do and you're relying on your teammates to tell you it's a very very difficult and trying time for him and, uh, Williams who's gone through exactly that experience puts the ball out this time so there'll be a scrum right on the 25. Back to tap, tap on the 25. And the ball whipped back there. And Dowd picks it up. Trying to go through a gap. David Hume, he does spot a gap. Still look to get the pass away too. Now they're going for Hume. Looks like two more important uh, championship points here for Witness, who started the day three behind the leaders, Castleford. And the fire's come, and the fire comes into the action, and you don't stop Martin the fire. Well, they've come to acclaim a new hero, but the fire's not going to be out of the spotlight for very long. Well, what happens here? All eyes on Jonathan Davis and Martin of Fire. You watch how he slips into here. Him goes, takes his man out, slips the ball, and who should be on his shoulder? Martin of Fire. Everybody, eyes all looking for Jonathan Davis. But this guy knows he's a bigger name, bigger star. I can tell you, I can do it, and he can do it. And he knows how to celebrate. He's had plenty of experience. And Get two more points from the boot of Andy Currier. The witness have gone into the 30s. And at 34 points to four, the game is now beyond Salford. Again, it's Cairns. Now it's Shaw, who's been as good as anyone for Salford. And his ball for Bragger has got the former Keithley man sprinting for the try line. Well, Bragger's in a really rich scene of try scoring at the moment. And it's the turn for the Salford fans to cheer a little. Sure, along the line is Williams. Williams back inside for Cairns, 15 yards out. Herbert tries to use his huge frame to good advantage. Witness don't give many tries away on their own ground. The tackling here is very tough. And uh, it's left him flat. And the speed of Myler and the fire's on the left and the fire is away and he'll be chased all the way but surely no one can stop Martin the fire try number three he salutes yet another fine build-up by witness and it's turning into a benefit match for Martin the fire now well, Salford promised so much to Ian Bragger, but Witness again moving it out on their own half. And what a wonderful break this is by David Hume. Comes right up the middle of the field, has all the defence chasing him. Just about when he's caught, airs is up on his shoulder. Long pass out to Martin of Fire, and when he has it, there's a buzz around the stadium. Now, Hadley, who's a Welsh International Rugby Union player and pass, and he's being taunted by a fire as a fire simply streaks away from him, showing him the ball. What a try and what showmanship to score an excellent try. And a real buzz, as you say, David, around this ground. Such a showman. And, uh, there'll be another one if Currier kicks this. It's a difficult one. There's a roar. It's two more points. And witness go on to 40. 
still, we haven't seen Jonathan Davis with the ball in his hands. No, we haven't, but it says much for the witness. See, I'm sure every player is looking to shield the boy, to give him an easy start to the game. He couldn't have had an easier start than he's had. They played really well, but perhaps that might have been spurred on by the fact they wanted to play well, because he was part now of their team. And again, they're coming looking, and the crowd are really hoping it gets into Davis's hands, and it has at long left, and he sets off. Jonathan Davis going down the way, and it's a sensational start for the Welsh fans. He's bundled into touch, but he pleased the crowd with that. He beat two men in a flash, and just listen to the reception he's getting. Well, there was there was certainly nothing wrong with that of Jonathan Davis, and that's the arrogance the boy has got. He picked up the ball, he took them on, he chipped ahead, he knew probably he would be knocked away, but nonetheless it put it in, in play, and it was so nearly a try. Cairns has kept going, so has Bragger. He's probably been outstanding today for Salford, and Gibson gives it back to Bragger. Appears for a forward pass, not given, and Salford might just get a consolation score here. As witness regroup, they'll come looking all right. And Worrell along the line for sure. And over in that far side, there has to be a try for Adrian Hadley, surely, yes. So, a joyous moment for another Welshman. Well, some consolation, I suppose, really. Well, Salford haven't been bad, but tried to play pretty, pretty football. They moved it around well enough, but never really been able to make the break. But this is somewhat different. A short moves out a long ball. Only a fire now caught there. Two men goes in uh, Hadley. Hadley turns inside his man and says, well, Martin, come and get me. I'm going over this time, and he does. A pleasing moment for Adrian Hadley, who got his first tries in rugby league against the same opposition. He got two that day. He's got one today. Chance for Peter Williams to send Salford into double figures. Left-footed, not quite. So 40 points to eight is the witness lead. Something we said though. Two Humes together, here's David Hume, and again lurking menacingly over on that far side is the huge figure of a fire, but it's being brought right now. Coloto makes a good break, Coloto, and the ball inside is for Tatum, Jonathan Davis missed it, the fire didn't, and where did he pop up from? Well, a huge grin says it all. I'm sure the crowd would have loved Jonathan Davies to have had his name on the score sheet. He couldn't quite do it. The player always can. Well, they're moving it out again, and there's great anticipation. And Coloto now at 16 stone. What a menacing figure he is. Coming down the middle of the field, pushing off tackles left, right and centre. Done is to pass. Still making ground. Throws out a pasture. Tate gets caught. Everyone when thinks Jonathan Davis is going to have it, tries to flick it on. And Martin of Fire appears from the other side of the field. Another try. Four tries. What a player. the difficult kick for Andy Currier it's a good attempt and it just strikes the outside of the upright as you can see but Martin Afaya's fourth try and the 96th of his amazing career takes witness 44 8 ahead and there we see it 96 tries 33 this season astonishing so that's us try the script you wrote isn't it what well, more or less yeah <laughs> A relieved man, I would think. Yeah, well, it's nice. You've got to get him through steadily, and he has come through all right, so jobs are good and now. What did you say to him just before he went on? Yes. Well, we've talked a lot with him all week, but I just said, basically, just do your own thing and enjoy yourself. And when he had that flying run, you had a quiet grin on your face. You thought, I knew he could do that. Yeah, he did well, didn't he? Doug, thanks very much indeed. John? So it looks as if the crowd are going to have to settle for having seen the first glimpse of uh, Jonathan Davis without him getting a score.
but with Tony Myler's injury, it just shows how useful an acquisition he is, another standoff half. That's right, uh, they, they will have come here today, they would have seen some of it, they've had a taste of it and they now know uh, that they can expect more and uh, that will only bring them back in droves. And Bragger again goes well. Oh, Bragger is an exciting runner. And he must be the slip of the season at £20,000 from Keithley. Well, he's really played well. He's uh, run straight. He's, uh, he's passed out passes at the right time. He's done everything right. For the first time today, the touch judge is on. And that was one heck of a swing. Well, uh, here we are. Bragg has just made a pass. And he comes in. And this really was a high tackle right up the top. And he will be talked to. I'd be very surprised if the referee doesn't do something then. But Mark Moran has really suffered as a result of that head tackle. And, uh, Mark Moran goes back to the sanctuary of the dressing room, but thankfully without the need of the stretcher. He's very groggy. David Cairns is back on. Salford uh, have the ball in their position. Worrell, long one out for Bentley. There is Cairns. Well, a spirited ending from Salford here. They've had to play second fiddle without question to witness throughout the game, but they've had their moments and a fire has certainly had his. He's away again down that touchline. Kicks ahead now and a fire. If it doesn't go out of play, he's in for try number five. Well, or is he? I don't think he is because the crowd, the referee, is going to bring them all the way back, I think. Windus have it again. They're still looking to conjure up a try at the very dead. And the ball is chipped ahead and they're kicking it through. Davis is up there as well. If he can get anywhere near, they might give Jonathan Davis the score. And now Alan Tate's got it. And Tate deserves it actually. Well, Widnes attacking again. Tate has now put a kick ahead and is chasing it himself. Hadley coming back to cover as a wing should, but now being outpaced by Tate, and it's neck and neck they're going for the ball. Hadley about to drop on it. Misses it, Tate keeps his feet, Jonathan Davis on his outside, will or won't he pass? Tate being the professional he is, knows that he has to make sure and score he does. Yes it is, up go the flags, up goes the score to around 50. And two more points here for Witness, important ones too. And there indeed it is that Hooter, so a memorable day for Witness. A convincing victory. They've won by 50 points to eight. With Martin Afire helping himself to four tries. The little boys swarm around Jonathan Davis. They have a new hero. They've had the briefest glimpse of him. But they like what they see. And there is confirmation of a bit of a drubbing, really, for Salford. Nine tries and seven goals for witness against two tries for Salford, 50 points to 8 the man of the match is, needless to say almost, in the witness dressing room now with David Watkins Well what a day we've had here at Norton Park this afternoon witness, the parading of Jonathan Davis rugby league's costliest signing but a witness team that really was on song 50 points this afternoon, wonderful entertainment, but the Stones bitter man of the match award this Toilet. afternoon goes to none other than that great entertainer Martin O'Fire Congratulations, Martin. Four wonderful tries. Not to be outstaged. You took it all well. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, I'm a very popular winner here today in the dressing room. <laughs> I'd really like to give this to Tony, but I'm not that, I'm not that generous, so I think I'll keep it myself. And... 
Tony, obviously a disappointment for you to come off at that stage when you were playing so well. How bad is the injury? Um, well, we don't know. We're not too sure yet. Uh, I've got to go to hospital straight away in the morning and I'm under order not, not to eat anything or anything because he thinks uh, he'll have to operate on it in the morning. Well, it could be a blow, obviously, with the Great Britain match next weekend. Well, he said, he said um, virtually a shoulder missing the rest of the season. Jonathan, after all the hullabaloo, I would imagine you're delighted to have got that one out of the way. Yes, you know, the, the publicity has been incredible and, uh, you know, I'm very sick of it at the moment. Um, but now it's all over. I played my first game. I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. You feel a rugby league player now, do you? Not yet, you know, after getting down lucky, I'm a part of a good side. Yeah, pretty good side today, 50 points. You couldn't have had a better beginning, really, could you? No, they were in full control of the game and Dougie threw me on, you know, and they kept the ball away from me. And, uh, you know, I just had to do my share of the tackling, that's it. Do you think you were going to get a try at the end there? Yeah, Tate, you could have kicked it a bit to the right, but, uh, you, know, just, you know, the Scots are all selfish, so he uh, scored himself. <laughs> Our regular match analysis tells us that Witness edged the scrums narrowly 12-10. Just the one scrum was won against the head by standing Witness hooker Richard Ayres. The home team did concede nine penalties to just four by Salford. And in a lively open game, Witness committed 11 handling errors, Salford 13. Well, Salford had to do much more tackling as you would expect, so while Witness's tackle count was topped by the Tongan Pelota with 19, Salford's was led by the Worrell brothers, Mick with 26, Tony with 23. Time now for the rest of the day's headlines and results from them. And the top story comes from Division 2. Lee ran up 88 points to crush poor Runcorn. Chris Johnson close to an individual record of 32 points, in tries and 10 goals. In the championship, Steve Robinson gets two tries for Hull Kingston Rovers, 24 hours after signing from Halifax. Derek Fox kicks a late drop goal to give Featherston victory over St Helens. Sean Edwards gets two tries in three minutes as Wigan bounce back. And in the cup, John Bentley picks up two more tries for Leeds. So to the full results, starting with the Silk Cut Challenge Cup preliminary round. Barrow Island 11, Fatto Heath 18, Leeds 32, Hunsland 6, Nil Swinton 36, Wakefield 18, Bramley 10, Westhold 2, Doncaster 48, York 35, Worthington 8, the Stones Better Championship, Bradford Northern 15, Warrington 4, Featherston 13, St Helens 12, Elkingston Rovers 34, Oldham 6, Widnes 50, Salford 8, Wigan 26, Halifax 12, Division 2, Batley 4, Sheffield Eagles 42, Fulham 16, Whitehaven 32, Huddersfield 7, Carlisle 14, Keithley 36, Rochdale 16, Mansfield 16, Chorley 16, Rangorn 2, Lee 88. Well, that witness victory here takes them to within a point of Castleford at the top of the championship. That's it'll play today, and St Helens missed a chance to leapfrog back above Hull. There's the second division. Only Lee and Sheffield at the top six played today. So Lee are now three points clear at the top, and Sheffield are up three places to third. Well, no details of how you can win two tickets for next week's Whitbread Trophy Great Britain France International at Wigan. You'll also be picked up in a door-to-door -door limousine and given a slap-up lunch. We want you to identify these try scorers from the Britain France match last year. Did you get them all? If you think you did, put them on a postcard and send them, please, to this address. Scrum Down, Yorkshire Television, Leeds, LS3, 1JS. And we need them, please, by the first post on Wednesday. The address again, Scrum Down, Yorkshire Television, Leeds, LS3, 1JS. And if you're not the first out of the bag, you can see that Whitbread Trophy International between Britain and France on Scrum Down next Sunday evening.
Dong replaced this evening's advertised program.